more. With the exception of a few of you, you're looking good. <laughs> yeah, Don, Don got me this morning early. Don said I was coming down. I was, I was outside listening to the music and playing right here. I was playing one way to play another. Don said, I'm trying to figure out which is your best side. <laughs> I said, Don, I think they're all my best side. He said, well, you can say that. <laughs> it got good. Now this week, this week has been a, a, a powerful week because it's a new year. We're talking about focus. And next week we're going to get into some heavy duty stuff. But today, instead of something heavy, we're going to talk about somebody heavy. Okay, we're going to talk about God. You know, in the last couple of months especially, but now with the stuff in Iran and Iraq and all the stuff that's going on around us and, and you got our, our, our government is divided and it never seems to get undivided. It seems to be divided even more. Even in the middle, it looks like, looks like we might have been going to war. We might have gone to war divided. It's just, oh man, it just blows me away. And, and I hear people all the time stop me and say, Preacher, tell me what's going on. Help me out here. You know, uh, help me get some relief in all this. And so uh, that's what this is about today. And before I, before I read the scripture, get your Bible and turn to Isaiah chapter 6. You ain't got to stand yet. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Uh, a boss one day was complaining to a staff at a staff meeting the other day that he wasn't getting the respect that he supposed to have gotten. So later that morning, he went out and got a small sign that read, I'm the boss. He then taped it to his office door. Later that day, when he turned from lunch, he found that someone had taken a note to that sign that said, your wife called, she wants you to bring her sign back. <laughs> okay, if you've been a boss, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Amen. Last night, I went someplace with my wife and she sat in the restroom and all I saw was captain. I saw this is the men's room or the female or the girls' room. Amen. I had to look down. I finally saw men. I went on in. Amen. <laughs> oh, y'all can smile. It's okay. We can smile in church. I promise your face won't break. If it does, we really get a perfectly good chance for us to pray for you. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. And for the reading of the word. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1. I really believe that we need to hear this message today. I mean, how, how many of you stay confused with what's going on in the world? And none of you stay confused. You never know who's the winning side anymore. You never know what's going on because they keep switching every day. And one side says they're right. The other side says they're right. Uh, one side says, well, they don't know what they're talking about. The next side says they don't know what they're talking about. And, and honestly, it just drives me crazy. And all this is going on in our midst, in the middle of the Antichrist, fixing to raise his head. But, all, but notice at the same time, while all this confusion is going on, and all these problems are going on, the Antichrist is going to come along, and he's going to stop all this craziness. That's how he's going to get into power. He's going to stop all this craziness, and both sides are going to like him. So that's how he's going to come into power. But hopefully, we're not going to be here. Amen? That decision between you and God, not me. Amen? <laughs> me and you. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above us stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, but twain he covered his face, but twain he covered his feet, but twain he did fly. And one cried to another and said, Holy Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house filled with smoke. Get ready. Then said I, I am a bad dude. I'm glad I'm here. I must be God's special person because he let me see this. What did he say? The most powerful man in the country 
the most godly man in the country, the man that God speaks directly to. And he says, Woe is me, for I'm undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. The infant of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with, from, with, the thong, or with the tongs from off the altar. And he said, And he laid it upon my mouth, and said, Lo, this had touched my, thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Whom will go for us? Then said I, Here am I. <coughs> send me. Search with your hands this way, for ask God for a special touch. And the morning, Father, we love you, we praise your name, we do thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, God, that your coming is so close, that we're on the edge of eternity as we speak. No longer is it the last days, it's not even the last hours, we're living in the last seconds. Help us, God, not to be shaken by everything we see going on around us. Help us not to get caught up in the political mumbo-jumbo. Help us not get into the name-calling and help us not get into the finger-pointing. Help us not get caught up in all of that. Help us get caught up in you. God, you have the answer for this day. You have the answer of the hour. And God, we can do nothing apart from you. We've got to have you right now to move in our life. Help us to bring our focus back in the proper area, and that focus should be on you. And when we focus on you, then the rest will fall in order. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We praise your name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Look on, we'll lay down. Tell somebody the past is behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us, and nothing shall be impossible. Amen. Now, now, I want to read that. I want to read that one more time. I, you know, th this just blows me away. Can you imagine being in the temple and seeing all this stuff? Let, let, let me just read this again. I, I, I can't stress this enough. And here the king Uzziah died. I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up in his train, filled the temple. Above us stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twenty covered his face. With twenty covered his feet. With twenty did fly. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the Lord moved and the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the, the tongs from the altar. And he laid upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. I also heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Whom will go for us? Then said I, Here I am. Send me. Now, 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 I want you to think about the time that we live in. We live in some very, very, very unstable times. You know, just a couple of days ago, uh, they were talking about we may be going to war. There was all kinds of things happening. Uh, uh, a young man that, that comes up here, you didn't might not have known this, but that young man that was up here, uh, Wyatt, he's in the military. He came here on weekends when he was uh, he was at Fort Bragg. And as far as I know, I can't get a hold of him. He's been deployed to Iran or to Iraq. So so there's a lot being a lot of shaking going on around us. There's a lot of stuff happening around us. Fort Bragg and other military bases have been put on high alert. Other businesses have been put on high alert because of what's going on around us. And so when you see this stuff, it really, it really hurts because, because we see so much unstableness around us. The greatest country in the world, and we're unstable. Wow. You see, he says here, in the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord sitting upon his throne. What he was saying is, in the same year, at the same time, as King Uzziah was losing his throne, God showed that he was still in control.
control. King Uzziah became king for 50 something years. Because of him, the place had prospered. Because of him, Israel was doing great. They were prospering religiously. They were prospering physically. They were prospering financially. This place was on fire. But because of his death, due to his death, just before his death and then his death, the place was unstable. Because they didn't have that king like that. So it was politically, physically, and spiritually, they were down. Again, look at us. Look at where we live. Look at how we live. You never know anymore. You never know what might happen. You never know about what, but we might find out something has gone on that we didn't want to happen, or somebody in our family, something has gone wrong in their life, and, and, and you're going to have to jump and have to make split decisions. And so, all this going on around us, what we need is, listen, is focus. When all this stuff is happening, we lose our focus. So, here it is. To help us keep our focus, and every time I change this slide, you see the word focus, I want you all at the same time to holler, focus! Okay? Whenever you see the word focus, I want you all one time to holler, focus. So we're going to get back our focus. The way it really is. Let's watch this now. I can't help what Iran's doing. I can't help what Iraq's doing. I can't help what's happening all over the world. I can't even help what's happening in my own, my own backyard. We're all truly limitless or limited. Every last one of us have our limits. No matter how much you think you've got control, control is nothing but an illusion that we have in ourselves. We, nobody has control. But there is one who does. So watch this. Let's get in here now. What? Y'all almost hit it together. That was close. Okay. I want you to think about something. He's on the throne. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the ruler of all things. He's in control. He always has and always will be. He is the absolute sovereign ruler of everything. And it's not about, he's not about to give up his race. So what do we need to do? Focus. Focus on what really happens. Amen. Listen, I'm telling you, we have no control, but he does. Amen. He's on the throne. Okay. <laughs> Y'all getting it. He is high and lifted up. He is above all things. Nothing has dominion over him. Everything is under him. All governments, all power, all people. Point to somebody and say, even you. <laughs> he's high and he's lifted up. So we need to. All right. His train filled the temple. Come on, there you go. Look at that. Isn't that cool? His train fills the temple. His train represents his power. His power is everywhere. It reaches everything. It reaches everywhere. We cannot, no matter how hard you try, we cannot escape God. We cannot hide from God. We cannot run from God. Sooner or later, every person that we know is going to stand before God. So what do we need to do? All right. I thought we were going to have a little fun today because next week's going to, we're going to put the plow out again next week. All right? Here we go. Now, the train filled the temple. <laughs> Y'all are doing it. He is holy. What does that mean? It means he is actually set apart from, watch this, everyone and everything. He alone is perfect. He alone is sinless. He alone is uncompromising with sin. So what do we need to do? Hey, man, y'all getting it now. Here we go. We're going to have a little fun. <laughs> there you go. All right. His power is awesome. When he speaks, the earth shakes. In his, in his hands, he holds, watch this, in his hands, he holds all creation. He holds all of our lives. He has the power to do anything he wishes. He speaks. And it's done. So what do we need to do? Focus. Focus. <laughs> All right. We're getting there. Hold on. We're getting there. Because in a minute, y'all can say, please don't put that plow down. But it's going. <laughs> Here it goes. Here it is. So this is how it really is. God holds everything in his hands. Right? So now we're talking about how real, how God is. How, how real God is. Talking about God. Now we're going to. Here it goes. Now we're going to 
but now you're going to start a mill. You're ready. <laughs> How we really are. Who's more perfect? 
There is no one to turn to. That's what he was saying. We stand alone before God. When we stand before God, again, we can trust our friends. We can love our friends. We need our friends. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about leave everybody else out. I'm talking about when it comes to standing before God, even Trump, even the Senate, even the Congress are going to bow before all of God. Amen. And they can think they've got control. Remember, control is an illusion. Nobody has control. Okay? So now, here it is. <laughs> his touch. I love this. The same one who revealed his condition and our condition heals our condition. Let me tell you something. God loves you too much to leave you the same as he found you. A lot of times, people will see you and keep on walking because they know it's going to take too, require too much work <laughs> to be able to do something to help you. So they just keep on walking. They just keep on going. They don't want to go into the fight to try to help you. But God loves you too much to leave you like he found you. So, here we go. I'm getting close to the end. Somebody say, amen. Say, focus then. Focus, baby. Focus, pastor. Focus. Get in the middle. Okay. Then one of the seraphim flew flew to me with a burning coal he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips with it and said, See, this coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. Wow. Isaiah's actions affected God. When God sees you, how is he affected? When God sees you, does he want to reach out and help you? Or does he laugh and say, okay, do it yourself then, buddy? When the four men let their, let their friend down through the roof that had leprosy, the Bible says when Jesus saw their faith, when he saw their faith, it affected him. When God sees us knowing that we can't do it on our own, we have no power on our own, Yes, I, 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 I consider myself to be halfway intelligent. I consider myself to be pretty strong. But you know what? It's nothing compared to what comes at us every day. So when you go before God, do you go before God demanding? Do you go before God and tell Him what you want? Do you go before God with a shopping list? Or do you go before God and say, God, I need you to make me all I need to be. I need you to show me what I need. I need you to show me what you're doing in my life so that I can help others, so I can be a minister to others, so I can help others. So watch this. God initiated contact. He's the one. Isaiah and the whole nation was mourning because Uzziah had died. And so he put him in, let him go to the house of the Lord. He said, let me show you how it really is. Uzziah is a vessel that I used but I'm God Almighty, and I've got my own throne. And look, it's never been vacated. Not only initiate contact, he initiated cleansing. He took the coal and had it put on his lips to heal him. And then he initiated the calling. Now that I've cleansed you, now that I've done what I need to do to you, now, who can I send to tell people about this? And he said, man, of course. So, his actions affected God. Again, here's what I want you to do. Here's your homework assignment. This is a forever assignment. This don't come back next week with a paper. This is forever. Forever. Ask yourself, when it comes to your job, when it comes to your family, when it comes to your marriage, when it comes to the people you're around, when it comes to your church, here's what I want you to always be asking. God, how are my actions affecting? God, how am I? Show me what I need to do. So then, God, Isaiah's actions affected God, but God's actions affected Isaiah. Then I heard the Lord saying, Whom shall I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? And he said, Here I am, send me. Who will I send? First he looked up. 
He saw God as He was. Are you having problems in your life today? Are you having problems getting ahead? Are you having problems stepping up to the plate? Are you having problems making a difference? Are you having a problem getting in the arena and being a minister? And when I say minister, you don't have to have your license. I'm talking about being a minister. Every day we should be ministering to people. If you're having a problem ministering to people, and if you're having problems getting over something, or you're having a problem getting into something. Or you're having problems that you're trying to overcome and you need God to help you. <clears throat> the first thing you need to do is look up. Very first thing. The problem is to us, too many of us are looking in. As we look in, we see our problem and we think God can't use us. We think God can't forgive us. He doesn't want to have anything to do with us. That's far from the truth. So here's what you do. You don't look at yourself first. You look up and you see God. As he is, he's on his throne. He's in control. I've said this a million times, but I'm going to say it again. <laughs> I remember when a man lost his son, and the man looked at me and he said, Pastor, where was my, where was God when my son died? I said he was in the same place he was when his son died, on the throne, in control. And I remember that when Bethany died. He's still on the throne, and he's in control. So first got to look up. Go look in, look up. Then look in. After you see God, you've got to see God first. If you're having problems with whatever, look at Him first. If I look at myself first, I may not look anywhere else. I may just get depressed and quit. If I look at myself first, I may just decide, you know what, there's no way I can overcome this. I'm stuck and I'll never get out of it. But if I look at God first and see what He's got going on, and see how he touched Isaiah. I know that after I look at him, then I look at me. He saw himself as he really was. Let's just put it in possum trap in that car. He looks up and sees God. Watch this. Wow. He looks inside and goes, uh oh. Let's bring it back home now. Wow, check that out. Whoa, <laughs> I'm not too happy with what I see. And then, once you give it to God, he looked out and he saw others the way they are. Now I told you, I'm not keeping you long today because today is something special. Today is your special day. Believe it or not, you're going to get out early. This is the first time, maybe the last time the whole year, so write it down. <laughs> what would happen? How would see this church grow? I hope everybody has hands go up. I can tell you a way. Next week, this church would double. Double. Next week. And then, if we kept doing it within a couple of months, we'd have to build. Wouldn't that be cool? You know how we do it? Everybody, rescue one. I can't rescue a hundred. I can't rescue twenty, but I can rescue one. <clears throat> what if next week everybody brought one with them? And the next week that it was doubled, everybody brought one. It would be quadrupled. Next week, can you imagine how the momentum would go? And the momentum would shift, and you'd be excited about church, you couldn't wait to get here. And then, you said, hey, we don't have any room anymore. We need something to help us get more of God and get more in here. So we can sit back, and look in, and call it quits. I have to be honest with you. I got a whole lot of room for improvement. Maybe y'all don't. I do. But if all those look in here, I'm going to stay depressed. I'm going to stay down on myself. All that, but if I just look up here first and look at him. That song, I can speak of his love forever. Good Lord, have mercy. They could have sang that song for the rest of the day. It was so awesome. 
I can sing of his love forever. Oh, it was so awesome. Change your focus. Put it on God first. Then say, here I am, God. Whatever I need, you hand it to me. You show me. You do the work. Because you're the mighty God. You're the mighty one. You're the one that knows me better than I know myself. And then after he starts working on you, instead of looking, just keep on looking in and start looking out. How can I tell somebody else about how awesome this is? How can I bring them into this? The church would double God's kingdom, but it'd be amazing. We read this one scripture, and then we're going to, DC, get ready to come play something. We'll read it again. It was the year King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. Again, this is another translation. He was sitting on a lofty throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Attending him were mighty seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, with two they flew. They were calling out each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Their voices shook the temple to its foundations, and the entire building was filled with smoke. Then I said, it is all over. I'm doomed. For I'm a simple man. I have filthy lips. I live among the people with filthy lips. Yet I've seen the Lord, the Lord, the, the Lord of heaven's armies. Then one of the serpents flew to me with a burning coal. He had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips with it and said, See, this coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed and your sin is forgiven. Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom shall I send as a messenger to these people? Who will go for us? I said, Here I am. Send me. Everybody stand. Again, this is that 2020 focus, getting our focus, get our focus on God, not ourselves, but on God, not our problems, but on the problem solver. Every head bowed, every eye shut, no one looking around. I'm fixing to ask some hard questions, but if you'll be truthful with these questions, this is an acknowledgement that God sees. And God says if we acknowledge Him and we acknowledge our problems, He will direct our paths. He'll make straight what is crooked. It all comes with acknowledging. Every head bowed, every eye closed. looking around, you're safe. How many in here would put that hand and say, Pastor, I am having the hardest time overcoming. You know what it is. It could be fear. It could be problems in your life. It could be something in your job, something in your marriage, something in your own family. But I'm having problems overcoming this. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, bless them, bless them. Show them that they can win. Show them that there is help. And now let me ask this other question. How many be honest and say, you know what, my focus has been off. If all you do is look around at everybody else before you look at God, you're going to get a distortion. Yeah. If you're not careful, you'll think something different of yourself than other people. It'll start all kinds of pride, all kinds of things. You can't look at others first. You gotta look at God first, and look at yourself, then look at others. That's the order. So how many here with our head bowed and eye closed? You raise your hand and say, you know what? I've been focusing on the wrong one. I've been focusing on me. And all it's done is cause problems. I've been focusing on others, and all it's done is cause problems. I need to be focused on God. Let's put that hand up. 
Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless them. Remember, if you focus on others first, it'll cause pride to rise up in you. And or it can cause you to step out of God's will. If you focus on yourself first, it can cause depression. It can cause anger. It can cause all kinds of things. It can still very much cripple you and God's kingdom. But you got to focus on God first, then ourselves, then others. Please, if you know caregivers, 
and they're having a hard time, get them here. It'll be awesome. It's not only will it be awesome that you can hear about it, caregivers are going to be all over the audience. Y'all can talk to each other. You can fellowship. You can explain to each other how you feel. Mind's clear. God's got this. Man. All we got to do is, I remember my one of my favorite sayings and one of my favorite movies is, focus Daniel's on. Focus. That's what I'm talking about. Focus Daniel's on. Focus. Okay. This week, focus. Remember, here's the order. Don't look around and look at people first because that'll make you mad. It'll make you discouraged. It'll get you aggravated. Don't look at yourself first. You'll get discouraged and want to quit. Look at him first, then yourself, then others. That's how you help people. Him first, then yourself, then others. That's how you're dropping that mask down again. God's dropping down that mask. You've got to put it on first. You've got to let God work on you so you can help others. Amen? Ain't God good? All the time. All the time. <laughs> Amen. Brother Steve. We love you, Lord, and we just praise you and thank you, Lord, for all the things that you do for us every day of our lives. And, Lord, help us keep our eyes on you. Help us to focus on you first before and in ourselves before we do anything, Lord, that, that we can just help others to find you. And God, we give you the honor and the glory and praise for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah.